Hi everyone, I would like to welcome all of you for joining our webinar today covering the healthcare and life sciences sector. My name is Howard Chan and I'm the Regional Director of MicroPage. I'm excited to share with you our agenda for today, which will cover the landscape of the Hong Kong healthcare and life science sector. Following this, we will talk about our findings from a Talent Trends report, and we will wrap up today's session with a Q&A. So I encourage you to ask any questions along the way. I'm excited to introduce to you our speakers for today. First, I would like to introduce to you Andy Wong, the Head of Innovation of Invest Hong Kong, who is responsible for bringing biotech, medical devices, pharmaceutical um, companies, research institutes, and healthcare service providers to Hong Kong. Welcome, Andy, and thank you for your time today. Thank you, Howard. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be here. And thank you for Michael Page inviting me to be a presenter today. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Andy. Next, I would like to introduce to you Janice Chan, our practice lead of the healthcare and life sciences sector for Michael Page, who will share her insights with us on our key findings from a Talent Trends report. Janice, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Janice. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Janice. I'm going to pass the time to you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Howard. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. So um, my name is Andy Wong. I'm leading the uh, innovation and technology uh, with Invest Hong Kong. I think um, for the last year, right, we've seen a lot of investment in Hong Kong in regarding to the pharmaceutical. I think this is a very booming market under the uh, context of uh, COVID-19. Uh, maybe Howard, you can uh, move it to the next slide, please. All right. Uh, to begin with, I would like to introduce about Invest Hong Kong, um, who we are, first of all. So we are a government agency. Our objective is to help the company, particularly for the foreign company, including overseas and also mainland Chinese, to set up their business in Hong Kong. So we provide all different kinds of support uh, to enable to, to establish the business in Hong Kong. So we divide it into different sectors, including um, uh, business professional, creative industry, etc. And I look after the innovation and technologies. Right. Next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, we have uh, about, uh, in addition to Hong Kong headquarter office in uh, MOT here, and we also have a 31 uh, location uh, globally. Uh, you can see the map all over the world. In particular, we have a couple of uh, office in the key city in China. Uh, one of our unique factor, we have a very good relationship with all those ecosystem partners, including our government uh, department, technology park, science park, uh, cyber port, uh, th those chamber and association big four, and also incubator, accelerator, investor, strategic corporate, and also research institution and the university as, as well. Next slide, please. Thank you. And um, when I talk about the biomedical, we, we usually look at the whole, the whole value chain, right? So how does Hong Kong fit into the value chain? I think we provide a very comprehensive, a completed biomedical value chain, uh, starting with a government support policy and incentive. I will talk about it more in detail. Uh, the, the talent pool from Hong Kong. So as you know, we have a very top-notch uh, university in Hong Kong. It rank, uh, six universities rank top 100 globally. And the two universities in Hong Kong, Hong Kong University, uh, Chinese University, and Polytech, etc., they have a uh, very good um, medical school and also provide a lot of students and um, very good in the uh, basic research in the biomedical as well. Uh, we have a very good uh, efficient uh, clinical network and also healthcare system in Hong Kong. Um, talk about it later. And we have uh, uh, all those pharmaceutical companies already have their uh, regional headquarters in Hong Kong since many years ago. Facility, we talk about the science part uh, as well. So, uh, and then uh, we have a very good uh, the uh, um, uh, farmers, uh, fundraising platform as well. So if we look at this slide about the biomedical activity, it, this is a more like a two by two matrix, right? Starting at the bottom is more on the startup scale up kind of, um, kind of uh, uh, um, organization. And then we move on to the uh, small media enterprise and then the um, multinational company. On the vertical side, uh, we divide it into different activities they can um, do in Hong Kong, covering from the bottom is the research and, and development, manufacturing, sales and marketing, and also a healthcare service provide. Uh, you can see on the bottom line, right? So the, we are very active in the R&D, um, in particular for the startup and scale up kind of uh, uh, innovation, uh, covering diagnostic, uh, health tech, medical device, advanced therapeutic st stem cells, regenerative medicine, and also TCM stands for a traditional Chinese medicine, right? The red color, what I put in here, is there some trends that we see in, in, in the market and it, which is not unknown to everyone, which is using the AI. 
for uh, doing the diagnostic uh, AI for the image analysis, AI for drug discovery. Is the idea is to use the AI the, the technology platform to enable the more uh, advanced research in here. And uh, manufacturing, uh, we have the TCM. We see the quite a lot a number of TCM companies setting up their manufacturing in Hong Kong. Particular uh, people would like, particularly in the mainland Chinese uh, tourists, want to buy the tra traditional Chinese made in Hong Kong. Health tech um, and also medical device. We see it. Uh, by the way, the bubble chart meaning the size of the uh, the kind of the investment uh, globally, right? So the pharmaceutical company, right, is um you can see that is the all dominated by the MNC in Hong Kong, and then the top one is the healthcare health service, right? So you can see that a smart hospital, for example, using the more and more on the teleconsultation, a medical ro robots as well to be uh, deployed in the uh, hospi hospital. As you all know, the 5G is very, um, is, is already launched in Hong Kong. So uh, some of the hospital is already using 5G for remote uh, uh, operation already. So we have the clinical labs, also a uh, uh, contract research company also in Hong Kong. Next slide, please. Thank you. So you can see uh, this one is divided into two parts, right? The on the left hand side is about the dual track healthcare system, right? So ninety percent of healthcare is delivered by the public, ten percent uh, in the private. Underneath the public, we have a uh, uh, the Department of Health. We have two key offices. One is drug for the uh, drug registration, and also the medical device uh, control office. And then the hospital authority, which is uh, covering the uh, seven cluster of uh, forty two hospitals in Hong Kong, and then the twenty top 20 pharmaceutical com company already in Hong Kong. So you can see that they have a very active in Hong Kong doing the sales and marketing as well as some uh, diagnostic R&D function in Hong Kong. Next slide, please. Thank you. <clears throat> so a clinical trial, right? So um, why, why people saying Hong Kong is good uh, as, a, as, a, as a hub for clinical trial? I think uh, here we show four key reasons for being the leading trial center in Asia. One is the, the framework. So uh, we use uh, both in, um, Chinese and English language. So, so to, in doing the clinical trial is very efficient. And also we have a, a transparent, the step-by-step the -step kind of flow for the clinical trial. And uh, our data, the clinical trial is accepted by the top-notch FDA, um, EDA, and also the NMPA, right? In different uh, uh, specialist uh, domain, right? Two hospitals, um, <clears throat> the New South. Wells Hospital and Queen Mary Hospital is accredited by the NMPA as well. So the top notch investigator, including the KOL in different um, uh, specialists, is, is, is very well known in, in globally. And we have a very well equipped hospital and also a network of a CRO in Hong Kong as well. So next slide, please. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> for the Hong Kong Science Technology Park, as mo most of us have heard about, right? So it provides a very good world class. R&D facility in the biomedical sector. So uh, they have a very expensive equipment already installed to, uh, to enable the shared facility for incubating as well as the tenant who move into the science part to do the research function. So it covered the, the uh, drugs discovery drug uh, from the bench to best, uh, the, from the bench to the best side. And also they offer the incubation program, which is a four years program. Six million kind of uh, uh, dollar terms in ter uh, dollar terms for the uh, uh, support, uh, covering the professional surveys, coaching, and also the talent development, etc. Next slide, please. Thank you. So um, another one I want to mention is the last year in 2020 May. So we set up uh, a Hong Kong Genomes Institution, right? So the whole idea for this Genomes uh, Institution or the what we call Genomes Project is talk about 1.2 billion uh, dollar investment. Is uh, doing the whole uh, genome sequencing DNA project. Um, it mainly serves two main purposes. One is for the clinical application. The other is for scientific research. And to create such a database, we the uh, the overall uh, objective is to create twenty thousand cases, right? And then split into two phases. One is phase pilot phase, which is talk about two thousand cases to be done, completed by two thousand twenty mid of two thousand twenty two. And then the rest of 18,000 cases will be spread over the next three to four years. So we build up such a database to enable uh, the data access for clinical application as well as scientific research. So the key stakeholder will include the Department of Health, Hospital Authority, uh, the university for the ac academic side, and also the private um, hospital as well. So the data asset into different tiers, right? the first two, one to three, right? So tier one definitely will be 
are able to access to the patient uh, whole genome sequencing for the clinical uh, uh, applications, right? And then the uh, one, two, the, the third one is more for the dedicated uh, facility to have an anonymized, anonymized kind of analysis result for the uh, scientific research. Next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, another one I want to talk about is the the uh, funding support. Uh, the um, the Hong Kong is the as you all know is a, is a good platform for the listing. So if you can see on the bar chart, right, the over the last eleven years, right, from two thousand ten to two thousand twenty uh, last year, so we, we have been ranked the number one in terms of IPO fundraising for the six years, right, and. Um, in, since 2018, we changed the rules for the biomedical because we, we all know that the biomedical is a long journey, right? So we changed the biomedical listing rule to another chapter called 18A. So starting in 2018, so over the last three years, right, uh, up to 2020, so we have 21 companies listed. Total amount raised is around $53 billion. And um, we are the second globally after New York, right? But we project that given the more and more company to, to be listed in Hong Kong with the flexibility we can offer. So we can, um, hopefully that we will be number one um, in, in the future. And to order to list it, right? So um, those uh, have passed the FDA phase one clinical trial and then with a good result, and then that's uh, eligible to apply for the listing, which is very, very attractive for a company who want to list in Hong Kong. So next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, for the next slide, we were talking about the um, another one, another angle because uh, the, uh, the 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 policy measured by the government. So uh, which linked the uh, link into the uh, another concept is called Greater Bay Area GBA. So the whole idea is that we Hong Kong is a seven million people, right? And then Hong Kong is a very high dense. How can we leverage Hong Kong together with the city nearby into China, which is the GBA area, right, Greater Bay Area? So, in, to drive that, the government will have a different policy measure. I quote here: the yellow, uh, the red part is the something related to the innovation technology, because the whole facilitation measure cover a, a lot of different things to enable the living, the how to raise the quality of living between the uh, Hong Kong and also mainland Chinese, right? So the, the one I quoted in the red is more specific for the innovation and technology. Like for example, the registered drugs in Hong Kong and also common medical device being used in Hong Kong will be able to be used in GBA in, uh, in the future. And right now it's doing phase by phase kind of trial. So the designated institution like the Hong Kong University and Shenzhen Hospital has been the first one being trialed to use the drugs which uh, registered in Hong Kong can be used in, in, in that hospital. And also the other one is like uh, for the uh, human generic uh, genetics uh, samples can be used for clinical research in, in Shenzhen as well. So next slide, please. And other one is the, the kind of the uh, commitment by the government. So we talk about the 100 billion kind of a total investment by the government in the INT industry. Uh, if you see the uh, the, the chart uh, on the left hand side, so it's built across infrastructure R and D facility by the university, the talent pool, and also the R and D funding. So um, another big infrastructure, um, maybe you are heard of, is called Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation Technology Park, which is in the Lok Majau Loop, which is a couple of times bigger than the current science park in 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 the area. And also we will continue to expand the cyber port and also build more uh, building in the uh, science technology park as well. So, and in terms of the uh, university, right? So they have different kind of uh, um, research fund available from the university and also the two innovation Hong Kong. One is for the healthcare, one is for the AI robotics. Uh, for the talent, uh, we'll continue to have a subsidized, which is called talent research pool. And particularly the government is going to drive the R&D. So if you are doing the R&D in Hong Kong, you can apply for different kind of funding, something called uh, 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 Enterprise Support Scheme and other is a research partnership program. Those are the one-to-one -one matching kind of funding. So if you put one dollar, the government will put one dollar uh, in order to match it for the R and D. And also the other things like a, a cash rebate and also um, the tax deduction in the R and D expenditure, etc. Next slide, please. So I, I think um, I sum up everything uh, completed from the the facility available, the funding available the listing platform uh, under the stock exchange 18 So uh, for Invest Hong Kong, we are willing to support our client from the whole uh, customer journey, from the planning stage to set up your business, to launch your business for promotion and expansion, etc. 
So um, hope that will give you a, a snapshot about the uh, the healthcare system in Hong Kong. Thank you. I pass it back to Howard. Thanks a lot, Andy. Really appreciate the sharing. I mean, from what I hear, it sounds very exciting. The government is investing over a billion dollars, a hundred billion dollars, Hong Kong into this space. And, and you mentioned, you know, the growth of uh, genome projects and, and the emergence of AI and technology into this area as well. So it seems like there's a lot of exciting stuff happening in this space. So thank you so much for sharing, Andy. Really appreciate that. So I'm going to pass the time to you, Janice. Um, looking forward to your sharing of your findings. Okay. Thanks, Howard. <clears throat> so, okay. So, hello everyone. I'm Janice, practice lead of healthcare and life science at Page Group. I'm excited to share about the key findings from the Talent Trends 200, uh, 2021 reports and our key observations of the industry. Uh, next slide, please, Howard. <clears throat> Yes, um, I will also share about the hottest areas and challenges in recruitment. To begin with, the Talent Trend Report is a regional survey covering 12 regions, over 5,500 businesses and 21,000 employees, of which 3,500 are directors or CXOs. 2020 has been a really tough year for most businesses. Still, we can see that 44% of companies expect a 9% increase in headcount on average in 2021 demonstrating an upward trend in demand in the healthcare life science market. So what's happening in the healthcare life science market in Hong Kong? Let me share some key observations. It is no doubt that the healthcare life science market has high resilience. The pandemic has particularly given heightened awareness around healthcare and medical services. Not only individuals, but more companies are starting to invest in this sector or switch their business focus to capture business opportunities in longer term. Besides, Hong Kong's aging population creates long-term growth potential for the pharmaceuticals, medical technology, and healthcare devices industries. The demographic of elderly persons aged 65 or above is projected to increase from around 18% of mid-2020 uh, 2020 to almost a third of Hong Kong's total population by the mid uh, 2030s, which is 2.6 million. Can you imagine? There will be significantly rising demand in medical equipment, health services, and elderly care facilities. The Hong Kong government has been increasing hospital infrastructure given the increasing demand even before COVID. By 2026, the hospital authority aims to create an additional 5,000 hospital beds and 90 operating theaters as well as uh, to increase the yearly capacity for general and specialist outpatient clinic attendances by an additional 430,000 and 2.8 million. The plan also includes the construction of new acute hospital at the Kai Tak development site and the redevelopment of 11 other hospitals across the city, including Kwai Chung Hospital, Prince of Wales Hospital and Queen Mary Hospital. The Chinese University Medical Center is also ready to operate this year. So as a result, ongoing spending will be needed across talent recruitment, purchasing on the medical equipment, um, drugs and technology costs. Next page, please. As Andy has mentioned earlier about the government support at the healthcare and life science sector, there are around 150 biomedical enterprises in Hong Kong Science Technology Park. Witnessing a major growth in new startups and companies moving into the Hong Kong Science Technology Park. There are also significantly more biotech related companies, up to around 300. The key research and development areas are oncology, cell and gene therapy, and next generation biologics. More, op more job opportunities have been created to manage the running of the businesses, research development professionals, and the PhD students are in high demand. There are currently 1,000 research and development professionals in Hong Kong with the support of funding taking place. MedTech is still growing as digitalization is ongoing trend from patient care delivery to precision therapeutics. For example, digital healthcare, virtual consultation and telemedicine would have great potential. Hopefully this can be another way out to reduce some pressure in medical services in Hong Kong. I'm sure many of you are aware of the news related to the Greater Bay Area. Many me medical technology companies have their production base in one of the nine mainland cities. 
Hong Kong historically has been an important hub in sourcing, quality control, research and development, product design, sales and marketing. With the development on the Lok Ma Chao Loop, the R&D center in Hong Kong in future, it will encourage more talent movement. Moreover, a pilot program has been launched in the Hong Kong University Shenzhen Hospital related to the use of drugs registered in Hong Kong. Quite likely in the future, more drugs registered in Hong Kong can be used in the Greater Bay Area, as mentioned by Andy as well. Pharmaceutical, biotech and medical companies could definitely benefit from the 70 million consumer market. Talking about capital markets, how many of you are currently working from home and watching on the AES dot right now? Biotech firms have drawn a lot of attention in the Hong Kong stock market since COVID-19. And I'm sure some of you might have some, made some good profits. The healthcare market is relatively steady from the investment point of view, with record high in the IPOs in Hong Kong and China in 2019 and 2020. Thanks to the support from the Chinese government in policy, funding and rising spending appetite by consumers. Both factors lead to more venture capitalists or private equity investing into this industry, further attracting more international companies coming to Hong Kong for IPOs. Merger and acquisitions in healthcare life science also means faster growth and more collaboration with synergies and better outcome. Major market players have been very active. Examples include AstraZeneca acquiring Alexion, um, Gilead Science acquiring Immunomedics, uh, Simmons acquiring various medical systems, etc. Yes, <clears throat> given the track record of Hong Kong so far, it is not surprising that in just two years, Hong Kong has grown its reputation as a global hub for biotech listings. Looking at the pie chart on the left, it shows that BioPharma is taking the lead. The IPO market also indicates soaring needs in talents in both banking and finance, asset management, legal, investor relations, technology, and healthcare or biotech talents. You may look at the list on the right on the, uh, on the um, job opportunities created in 2020 related to IPOs. We've also noticed that there is a growing trend for the Chinese biotech companies to expand their research and development, clinical trials, and able testing functions in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is also facing the challenges to compete for talents with other countries like Singapore, Taiwan, and China. In terms of hiring activities, let's look at the healthcare life science market in three segments, commercial, clinical, and biotech. The bottom part of each column illustrates the key job types, respectively. Industries highlighted in red indicates um, companies um, with strong hiring appetite in 2020 and 2021. Topping the list are diagnostic tools, including the diagnostic laboratories like uh, COVID testing, genetic testing. Contract research organizations are expanding their functions in Hong Kong to conduct more cl clinical trials and research, as mentioned earlier. On a side note, non-COVID clinical trials can proceed in a relatively normal way in China comparing to the rest of the world, which gives certain Chinese companies an edge against their overseas peers. Biotech companies has a lot of going on, as we mentioned. More nutraceuticals have been expanded as a horizontal integration, selling more health supplements online and offline. The middle part. The overall business of clinical sector in the private practice in 2020 was average due to the reducing number of non-urgent cases. Wearing of masks also reduced the number of codes, meaning less businesses for the general practitioner doctors. Still, positions like radiographers, radiologists, oncologists, and physiotherapists are always in high demand. Some of you might already know, starting from 2021, the Department of Health requires every private healthcare facility to appoint one chief medical executive, usually doctors, and restrict further on the quality assurance of their business management and operations, meaning there will be increasing demand for higher skilled nursing staff. Not to mention, pharmaceutical and medical device market hitting on COVID-related areas have particularly good results. However, due to the reduced number of urgent operations in surgeries and less patients from the China, uh, mainland China, this segment remains stagnant in 2020. 
Moreover, due to the、uh, post political unrest and COVID nineteen, more drugs curing depression and therapeutic area、uh, therapeutic services by the psychiatrist or clinical psychologist also have greater demands than before. In terms of salaries and bonuses, according to our talent trend report, average salary increment offered for new hires in 2021 would be 10 percent or more. While 25 percent of healthcare life science companies anticipate bonus payout in 2021 would be more than one month, it represents the market in healthcare and life science is over still high resistant and very active. Our talent trend report shows that 50 percent of the employed healthcare and life science professionals would anticipate new job opportunities, while 32 percent are passively open to new roles. Among active job seekers, candidates usually receive multiple offers. Companies have to know what the key motivations can they attract the targeted candidates. Clearly, job seekers would opt for better pay and company prospects. We noticed that 88 percent of them actually rank pursuing professional development opportunities as the top priority. Salary, of course, is a key factor. However, many of the candidates would accept a more challenging role to develop new skills. Even the salary increment is not significant. Generally, most of the MNC companies we come across offers attractive medical insurance coverage, family-friendly initiatives such as birthday leaves, education allowance.、Um, startups would be more eager to offer share options, post IPO bonus, or two to three months plus discretionary bonus. On the flip side, let's see what the healthcare and life science、uh, candidates want. There are four important categories. First, flexibility and benefits. Work-life balance, remote work options are ideal, as more healthcare and life science candidates work part-time or freelance with more family commitment. It's not uncommon that、uh, many senior candidates in the market are still in the market after retirement age, as the industry is still lacking talent in general. Of course, premium medical benefits, also plans, meal allowance, incentives, study leaves, company traveling are also attractive ways to hire and retain talents. Second, value knowledge advancement. Many candidates in this field would ideally work in companies offering products or services that are interesting or appealing to them. Variety in products or services, whether companies willing to invest in the latest technology and innovative ideas, would also affect candidates' decision to accept the offer. Third, company culture and employee recognition. New generation highly emphasize on company culture and recognition. Frontline work is also is often demanding. Good teamwork、uh, and great leadership can be more comforting. Quite often, autonomy is very crucial to the skilled employees, as they may feel like、uh, they have been respected and entrusted by their management. Also, by setting clearer Career goals. Candidates feel that they are growing with the company with a path. They can envision what's、uh, their future lying ahead if staying in the company in the longer term. Last but not least, we notice that new generation are less inclined to stay in repetitive setting, and they look for career exposure. There is a growing appetite by the healthcare life science candidate to strengthen their commercial sense in addition to their technical skills. Nowadays, private practice is more appealing to can- candidates in the ha- hospital authority or government-affiliated companies because of its hierarchical and lower flexibility. This is、um, a welcoming, welcoming news to private practice or commercial sector. To summarize, COVID-19 pandemic led to continuous growth in the healthcare and life science market, especially in areas such as medical devices, vaccines, therapies, and diagnostics. Prolonged suppression of demand in non-COVID-19 related areas will recover. The capital market has attracted more healthcare and life science industry players to enter by investing, fundraising, and capturing market、uh, M&A opportunities under the support、uh, by the Hong Kong government, booming Chinese market, and the Greater Bay Area development. This will create career opportunities in the whole sector, leading from asset management, financiers, investor relations, medical and technical. Professionals, etc. In technology advancement, more innovations and integration in Hong Kong market is、uh, anticipated with the support from the Hong Kong government, 
Hence, um, even though uh, Hong Kong's population size is small, more advanced diagnostic tools and digital healthcare can reduce the burden of shortage of talents in the market. Talent retention is ongoing challenge for companies fighting for the best talents and companies need to understand what drives and motivates the employees to stay in Hong Kong. Healthcare and life science talents will be continuously sought after. And we anticipate that, uh, we anticipate that there will be more growth in the talent supply after the pandemic with greater awareness in healthcare and wellness in the society. Also, with a growing number of opportunities and good prospects, that would definitely encourage more science students to enter the market. All in all, we definitely see great potential for this sector to grow. And we look forward to a more promising year for the healthcare and life science employment market in 2021. If you have any questions and inquiries, please feel free to contact me. I, and I'm happy to discuss further. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Janice. Really appreciate the sharing here. I mean, obviously it sounds like it's, it's a very optimistic and, and positive sector. Uh, and certainly uh, employers need to be a little bit more creative in, in, in retaining their staff and attracting their staff. Um, so on that note, um, I would like to take the time again to, to thank uh, Andy and, and Janice uh, for, for your time in, in sharing today. Lots of really insightful information. Um, we have a lot of questions uh, being asked on the Q&A. So I want to jump straight into the Q&A side. Um, I'll try to cover as much, uh, as many questions as possible, but if we're not able to address all of the questions today, um, you know, in, in the slide, you can see our contact details and you can feel free to contact any one of us in the near future. So I'm just going to jump right into the Q&A now. Um, starting with the first question, directed to more or less um, both of you, uh, Andy and, and Janice, how would the Greater Bay Area's development benefit Hong Kong in the coming future? What are your thoughts on that? Maybe I take the lead to uh, answer your sure. question and then uh, Janice can uh, supplement, right? So yeah, I think sure. um, the, the GBA, the overall idea is that Hong Kong is uh, 7 million people, right? The GBA yes. is 70 million, one seven zero, right? And it represents about 9% of total G GDP uh, in China as a total. So you can see that, and the, the, the why, what are the enablers to enable the GBA works, right? So I think it's a three major uh, uh, factor. One is the connectivity between Hong Kong and GBA, right? So you can, uh, from Hong Kong is what we call one hour, two hour living circle. So you can go there by the uh, land, public transportation, high speed railway, you can drive over the um, uh, uh, the bridge over, so yeah. so the connectivity is very convenient. First of all, and then the facilitation facilitation measure I mentioned in my in my presentation is about the government is really putting more step by step kind of a measure to enable the the synergy between the both sides, right? So so the uh, what I, it, not not just the about the corporate but also the people, right? So the people if you are professional in certain area. And then it, it can be recognized in China as well, in, in GBA area as well, for the lawyer, for the accountant or the tax, for the Qinghai, for example, I just met with the, uh, one of the uh, professional firm. And then for the tax uh, expert, they can be recognized in Qinghai, for example. So th this is, is up and coming. The third uh, the factor is that the technology enabler, right? So um, we have the 5G, we have the blockchain, we have a different kind of technology to support uh, what traditionally is more labor intensive kind of uh, function can be replaced by the technology enabled one. So, so we'll bring the two different uh, geographical, different places to combine together. Let me do the cloud, for example. So you put all those uh, data onto the cloud, then you can manage remotely from Hong Kong to uh, in China, for example. So uh, the, the benefit, for example, if you are doing the uh, healthcare medical device manufacturing, you can do it in China, Greater Bay Area. Cheaper labor, more efficient, not just the labor cost, because the labor cost, if you compare the China to Southeast Asia, may not stand out to be uh, very effective. But in terms of the logistics, the supply chain, and also the, the whole ecosystem, if you want to develop something, prototypes, you can find the uh, different uh, component in, in Greater Bay Area. Once you've done it, and then you, you made it, and then you want to ship it outside from China, this, this is the, 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 the way, where the uh, a benefit comes in is the, the, the logistic function, the supply chain function in, in China. So I think the opportunity is, is all in, in Greater Bay Area, is, is combining the Hong Kong professional service. Right? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Andy. Uh, yeah. Janice, is there anything you would like to add? Mm, 
I think uh, Andy has answered uh, very comprehensively. Um, yes, uh, but I need to add on a point uh, on behalf of, let's say, medical services. Uh, actually, a lot of uh, private practice has been uh, strategically chosen Greater Bay Area to expand their clinical services as well. Um, <clears throat> and we can see the trend that uh, by um, because in China, uh, the use of telemedicine or the virtual consultation is is very popular. So the use of digital um, ways uh, in the medical field is is easier in China than in Hong Kong. So I um, I think this also captures some sort of opportunities uh, attracting um, some Hong Kong business. Uh, practitioners to move there to start a business. Um, definitely, that will be a challenge in, in terms of attracting the Hong Kong frontline um, skilled uh, medical staff like doctors or nurses. Um, but we can see uh, the trend, uh, maybe the exchange of uh, the, the technology and also the information uh, can add more uh, opportunities to Hong Kong as well, because it can bring, bring, uh, bring in more patients from China to Hong Kong or you know a mix of services, um, yes. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, while I have you uh, answering this question, I actually have another question directed to you, um, Janice. What are your recommendations for people without healthcare or medical background who would like to get into this industry? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> actually, I often uh, receive a lot of inquiries like this. Um, okay. To be frank, in Hong Kong, I think um, if you want to get into the medical uh, sector, it's pretty much straightforward, considering you ha you have the education required. So um, there are also there are a lot of programs like uh, from the Polytechnic University, um, Hong Kong Science, uh, 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 Hong Kong UST. Um, these kind of universities have uh, particular programs like the biomedical engineering, um, or you know like a specific for uh, training radiographers. This kind of degree. Um, the thing is you need to spend at least uh, four years to complete the program and then you get the qualification. But the, the positive thing is uh, the salary um, in the Hong Kong market is pretty much uh, standard and is uh, attractive. So um, some graduates can have a fresh grad and offered above 30K per month in Hong Kong dollars, which is attractive. So um, this, uh, I mean, of course you can check on the, on the, on the areas that you're in, uh, interested to explore or you can talk to me if uh, you have a plan <clears throat> i think this is also an uh, another topic for some some uh, skilled uh, labor in hong kong who want to actually move their focus um, let's say they, they got layoffs and then they want to really develop their de uh, career in a healthcare sector and i do encourage this uh let's say in the wellness you know even the, the some trainers in the physiotherapist services um um, yeah, this this uh, this is definitely um, uh, uh, e uh, not a very difficult path to get into, uh, but the time uh, investment is crucial. So what you're saying is, um, if you don't, even if you don't have a background in healthcare medical, I mean, there are certain opportunities to take on some courses or you know, obviously brush up your skills academically, and then yeah. move into that sector. So yeah. that's probably yeah. one area to focus on. Yes, and you know, um, we need to note that the aging population in Hong Kong is really uh, getting more attention, and you know, um, so more um, more uh, labor is needed in the elderly services right. uh, as well. So, um, of course, depending on what kind of uh, uh, job you you can actually accept, but you know, for a very decent pay, then definitely there's a way. Uh, still, you want uh, like a not too bad salary to maintain. Uh, uh, your uh, your lifestyles. Uh, there are a lot of options in this field as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Janice. Um, next, I have a question directed to Andy. Uh, so, so Andy, the startup circle is actually quite competitive. Uh, what's your reference to these companies to increase their competitiveness? So, how do they stay on top of the game? Very challenging question. <laughs> Let me try to answer it. Right. So, I think, uh, everywhere is a competitive, right? So, if you are a startup, so you need to secure your um, financial resources, right? So yes. let's try to see whether you can get the support from the government. Um, for example, the government do support a lot of uh, uh, funding available in the R&D stage, right? So um, that could be um, in the early stage particular. And then um, you can look for the Hong Kong Science Technology Park, right? So they have a different incentive available for the incubation program. Let's see whether you're qualified to become an incubatee within the biomedical program because it's a four years program, right? 
within that, then you you can uh, enjoy a lot of a uh, different kind of training, consultation, and then mm. use the share facility in the science park. So it provide a very good platform for you to grow your business, and then you become more competitive uh, compared to the other. So I think the fundamental uh, uh, core issue is that whether you have the, the top of notch, top the top tier or the good quality kind of a technology behind it to support your development. Once okay. your your technology is good enough, then you can think about the the financial funding, the the other kind of support by the existing uh, science park or by the government, and then also um, they no matter it's a science park or from the public, they do have uh, some some sort of a venture funding. So so you can uh, try to source those funding to support yourself, and then once you do that, then you can. Um, make yourself more uh, in the circle. Uh, for example, um, in, in, for Events Hong Kong, we do have a startup festival, start some year festival, and also uh, from, through this kind of festival or, or the event, you can know the the circle of the community, and then from the community, you build on your network so that you know what works, what doesn't work, and then move to the next step. Thank you. Yeah, got it. So funding, networking. You know, yeah. very key elements. Um, I, yeah. I have another next question actually directed to you as well, Andy. So what are the future development opportunities for biotech companies after starting up in Hong Kong? And how is the government supporting uh, their sustainable growth? I, I guess somewhere related to the financing you just mentioned. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the more because uh, uh, the what we call the biomedical uh, life cycle is very long, right? Particular for the drug development, we talk about ten sure. years development. So, mm. so it's a, the valley of death. <laughs> you fall. Okay. Right? So, so how can you uh, avoid doing this? Is the because step by step uh, uh, monitoring because uh, the successful rate is not that high when you develop uh, the drugs, right? Is zero zero point one percent, right? So, and then after you are uh, coming from the. Uh, R&D stage to be clinical to clinical trial and then to commercialization, right? So I believe that we talk about the commercialization phase, right? So the government do have something like a pro innovation pro equipment policy. So the government, when they are trying to purchase something, we not just look at the price only one dimension, but we also right. look at the innovation of those product in order to make the decision to to purchase that product or the service. So this is something that government is driving toward leveraging the innovation. But mm -hmm. I think. Um, uh, to because once you move out the uh, the uh, R and D stage or the, the clinical stage, it become a commercialization, right? It's more commercial driven. It will become more depends on how good is your product, how is your service. A uh, government do support it, but uh, it's more on the whether you can find the right uh, the the platform to to launch your service. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Um, Question for you, Janice. Uh, since there's a shortage of talents in Hong Kong in the healthcare industry, what's your recommendation to the employers on how to fill the gaps? So, once again, going back to that talent attraction strategy, um, you know, are there any other additional points you want to share in that field? <clears throat> I think this is um, it's uh, it's ever challenging in Hong Kong, um, but um, I think it can be achieved in different perspectives. Uh, first, to uh, encourage um, the employment um, for the young generation. Um, uh, as I mentioned in the PowerPoint, uh, I think that's a good thing that um, yeah. after COVID-19, uh, a lot of um, students will actually uh, do agree that health and life science is a very high resistant market to get into. Um, and also uh, for the benefits for the, for the um for the public. Um, so uh, ideally there are more uh, people getting um, into the industry. Um, and of course, because of the infrastructure needs. Uh, so there are more schools like uh, for training nurses. Uh, currently there are a few more uh, uh, nursing schools have been established in Hong Kong. So yeah, yeah. Um, on the other hand, um, I think um, we have to think uh, ways to attract or retain those uh, experienced talents in the market, or, you know, like even those uh, who actually retire but still uh, able to work and are interested to back uh, to go back to their workforce and the companies can have flexible arrangements for these skilled laborers as well. Usually they have more experience and expect less uh, increment than the younger generation. So this is also another way out, um, but of course still in need. Um, last, but uh, you know, the overseas candidates um, in Hong Kong, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, difficult um, for the current regulations. Um, uh, you know, like have, have you uh, read uh, the latest update? Um, 
then the, propo the proposal for attracting uh, other foreign doctors into Hong Kong has also aroused a lot of you know controversial topics. So in Hong Kong, the health and life science market um, for uh, particular field job types are really difficult to attract talents. This is not something that the companies themselves can, can do anything. So uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, to reflect this uh, to uh, the regulation uh, regulators and also um, maybe think of ways to uh, how to increase the uh, the supply of overseas candidates to do so th those roles that are not really regulated. Then uh, maybe it's something that the companies can plan as well. Um, yeah. Okay, understood. And I guess just to extend to that question, just a question for both of you again, um, you know, obviously there's always a competition for talent uh, for Hong Kong. And, and aside from Hong Kong, certainly, you know, China, Singapore, other regions are also trying to attract the same talent to their respective countries. Um, you know, how do employees increase their competitive, competitiveness to attract talent to come to Hong Kong? over other regions um you know are there any special sort of uh strategies or uh, arrangements so that you know we can capture these audiences i think i can first start off by uh, sharing about um, some uh, points um yes uh, there's like a very fierce competition uh, of talents among uh, different um, countries in the apac for healthcare and life science professionals Especially, um, some companies nowadays can offer really flexible, like home-based um, recruitment as well for 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 really senior uh, staff. They don't really uh, need them to physically uh, stay in specific country, so mm -hmm. they give more flexibility to those um, candidates. And also, um, because the cost of living in Hong Kong is really high compared to China and you know Singapore or Taiwan, etc. So um, this is also like a, a crucial factor for some candidates to determine whether they want to stay in Hong Kong in five to ten years time to develop. Um, companies may need to think of ways to you know um, to subsidize their their, um, their living costs or you know encourage that to all give them like a vision that oh they can actually um can like a rotation program they can work across different cities uh, around china hong kong or you know really um this kind of uh this kind of arrangements would uh, make sure the candidates have uh, easier uh to um to to design uh, if they want to stay in the company um and of course the stability in um in the uh, in the Hong Kong uh, the life science field is also uh, is also crucial. Um, in the past, a lot of candidates would think that uh, Hong Kong has not invested a lot of time or um, you know funding in this area. So uh, more talents move to China or other city other cities. So um, I think a lot of candidates would also want to know the company um, whether whether the plans is really longer term. You know, not just by taking the funding. Uh, for you know two to three years but later right. on they want to really grow into something bigger or you know with more innovation then this will definitely uh, retain the top talents uh, in the company as well got it thanks janice andy anything to add uh i think in terms of the talent right so uh the particularly in the r d side right so the government have a, a scheme called research talent hub which is a sponsorship of those uh, um research people right so I talk about the PhD, which could be go up to forty-two thousand uh, Hong Kong dollar per month, right, for three years, right. So, and then for a company who are doing the R and D, can recruit up to four people. So, this is some sort of an incentive to drive the R and D function by enabling the corporate to or the uh, the the company to recruit more people in the R and D function. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I, I think overall, the Hong Kong is a uh, um, comparativity is a uh, personal tax rate is low, right, and then the the living yeah. style is uh, the quality of living is. is, is World class, <laughs> anyway. So, so this, this is the soft uh, um, side of looking at it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Um, very conscious of time. We have just two more questions. Uh, Andy, uh, could, could you share more on how biotech or new startup companies can capture the opportunities to grow not only Hong Kong but in the Greater Bay Area? Uh, I think in this in this case, right? So um, definitely, the GBA is is the the future that we can. Uh, look at it more carefully uh, or more uh, seriously. Uh, for example, the, the Hong Kong, we have the technology park, right? So in, in Greater Bay Area, in Shenzhen in particular, they do also have other technology park that you can consider. And then um, for the uh, 
Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, they do offer a program called a GAA, Global Academy Acceleration. So in here, right, is you can register to, to that, and then it's more like a enabling a, a buy and sell side platform. So if you are a startup, you have some technology, you you become registered to this program, and then become a, a sell side people, and then they will link up with different corporate. It, the corporate can be coming from GBL, can, could be coming from Hong Kong, could be coming from everywhere. So the buy side will look at your solution to see whether your solution is good fit for their problem. So uh, you can look at some sort of this kind of platform, which is linking up the buy side and sell side, and then to to allow you to explore a more business opportunity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that. Look, I think the final question is something we probably covered already, which is while while candidates are quite hot in the market, how can companies attract them to join? I mean, are there any final thoughts on 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 the once again the talent attraction side? Mm. Okay, um, uh, I have some point to add uh, regarding this uh, question okay. uh, that I didn't mention. Um, since there are uh, particularly uh, job types that are in high demand uh, in Hong Kong and there's always lacking talents, um, I think one area the company can also uh, look into is to, um, to you know, because uh, uh, um, very often my, our clients would prefer Chinese speaking or Cantonese speaking candidates mm. in, let's say, the clinical research organizations or, um, you know, the lab technologies uh, roles. Um, if the companies can, you know, um, to welcome uh, foreign in, uh, like English speakers to get into companies, I know, like, you know, uh, there might be some, you know, cultural adaptability or, you know, uh, it, it really depends. So, um, but but uh, but all in all, it's uh, another way to attract more candidates if you know uh, the, the language barrier is uh, removed. So, um, or you know, like um, by a mixing of uh, talents, and uh, you know, it it can it can be something that can be achieved as well. Um, also, I think the flexibility uh, or the training programs offered by the companies. Um, I mean, uh, if they can't really attract, uh, if they can't hire the talent they really need, then they better hire junior staff um, and train them, and probably give them like a program like uh, to uh, remain them in the in the company for three to five years time with some prospects, and that that will also encourage more candidates from overseas. Uh, you know, from helping them to apply the visa, working in Hong Kong for you know uh, some 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 roles. Um, yeah, this this is something that uh, companies can look into as well. Yeah. Great, thanks, Janice. Um, we just have a few more minutes left uh, in our webinar today. Just want to see if anyone else has any more questions they want to ask. Uh, we can still field perhaps one more question. So, does anyone else have any more questions to ask? No. Um, if I were to ask um, both of you, Andy and Janice, um, you know, the outlook for, for 2021, um, you know, what, what would be sort of one or two words that you would use to describe the market right now? Is it competitive? Is it buoyant? Um, I mean, how would you illustrate the market that you see right now? One or two words. <laughs> Rebranding. <laughs> I'm sorry. Rebounding. 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 Yeah, rebounding. 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 Yes. Rebounding. So, um, okay. I, I think I, I can just elaborate a little bit more why I'm saying rebounding because uh, we uh, we our role is attracting in foreign investment, right? So yeah. a lot of inquiry in the last year, um, trying to come to Hong Kong to do something, right, or to see the market, but un unfortunately they cannot do it because of the closure of the border. So the border control, once yeah. we we see that the the vaccine is available, right, so the border is open, then we do see that a lot of company will be interested to come to Hong Kong because uh, you can see the, the road to opportunity is here, <laughs> here or in, in Greater Bay Area. So so there's no doubt about it globally, from global speaking. Thank you. We're just waiting for the vaccines to, to take place and uh, yeah, so, so controls. A, a lot to, of like, just, yeah, yeah, just get ready. But, uh, but unfortunately, they, they haven't uh, been able to buy the ticket. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's okay. great. Thank, thank you. So rebounding. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Janice, one word. Uh, I agree. Uh, it's uh, it's recovering very fast, and we can see the trend. You know, uh, it's still very competitive. Um, yeah, not just. I, I think it's like the new normal. Like the public has probably adapted to the new living style, and uh, yeah. so the the, the non urgent cases. Um, uh, you know, uh, I know like uh, a lot of hospitals have resumed their surgeries uh, recently. 
um, as well. So I, I think um, the demand in the medical services devices will will, uh, will raise uh, gradually. Um, yes, and also uh, many people would uh, would expect uh, the um, the flags on the uh, China border, which yeah. attract more uh, Chinese companies or you know Chinese individuals who come to Hong Kong to get services as well. So I think everything is quite optimistic. Um, yeah, considering yeah. Hong Kong has already accumulated quite a lot of demand uh, locally. Yeah. Excellent. Well, there you have it, everyone. Uh, words of wisdom from Andy and Janice. Uh, just to wrap up, uh, wrap up today's session, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for participating today. Really appreciate your time. I also want to thank once again Andy and Janice uh, for for your sharing today. Uh, also, really appreciate a lot of insight information that you share with the group. Um, this more or less concludes our webinar for today. Uh, I hope that everyone stays safe um, and have a good week. Uh, and um, we'll keep in touch. Thank you for participating again. Have a good day. Happy, happy Thank you, everyone. Also. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.